Germany always just rolls France in Hoi 4. We all know this. But I have a feeling that this time is going to be a little bit different. Communist France has certain advantages that it can get from its focus tree. Certain focuses which will allow for some pretty nutty outcomes. I was on the edge of my seat through this run and I hope you guys enjoy watching it as much as I did. And if you did, make sure that you like the video and don't forget to subscribe for more videos like this to come. Additionally, if you have a suggestion for the next part of the Hoi4 ideology series, make sure you let us know in the comments below. And if you see a comment that suggests something that you think is cool, make sure that you let them know that you agree with them too. So to set this up, I basically just took these guys down a few focuses to where the communists would take over. That way uh, they don't have to actually go through any of the issues of it. It's just, they start it day one, I'm gonna see where it goes from here. The Anschluss has happened over in Germany. Meanwhile, the French Commune is just working through some focuses, mostly economic, pushing their way down this branch here, investing a bit into their colonies, a couple of military focuses, and then the right now seems to be working towards this uh, general work council to uh, help out their economy. But aside from that, I think they're basically just going to be sitting still, waiting, because as far as I know, Germany will still attack them, but maybe they'll look for friends other places. Because the idea of Germany fighting on a front with the Soviets as well as the French Commune, a French Commune that realistically is going to be stronger because they are not uh, held back by a few of the malices they get at the beginning of the game because they get removed whenever they go communist. It might be a buff for them, I assume it will be, but I don't know if they'll go with the common turn. They may actually be hard-coded to go with the UK, but uh, we'll find out. And Germany has annexed the Sudetenland as well as Czechoslovakia, and they are currently working on the Molotov-Ribbentrop Pact with the Russians. They have taken Memel from Lithuania, and that means the war with Poland is coming very soon. Meanwhile, the French Commune is just completely dumping all of their resources into building factories, and it may work out for them. They do have quite the surplus of guns as well as support equipment, lots of trucks, a ton of artillery too. So it could be good for them. They may actually be able to put up a bit of a defense. I'm rooting for them, but uh, you know, that's kind of the point of this video anyways, is to root for them. So hopefully they don't let us down. So here we are, time for war. Germany has declared and uh, Poland, probably not long for this world. Of course, Poland it never really lasts that long against the Germans. They will surrender pretty quickly and then uh, their lands will be split with the Soviets in the uh, the eastern portion. So, rip, but World War II is off and started, and uh, I'm really curious to see what's gonna happen with France. France has finished off a couple of things, getting rid of the victors of the First World War or whatever that is. Uh, now we have extensive conscription and war economy, so they are definitely gearing up for war. Whether or not Germany declares war on them or they get involved in some other way, it's coming soon. And now Germany pushes into the Low Countries, Luxembourg, uh, Netherlands, and Belgium falling very quickly, but no war with France quite yet. And keep in mind that France is not part of any uh, alliance network. We have the allies, we have the access, we have the common turn. France is just independent right now on their own. So if they get attacked, they're probably going to join one, either the allies or the common turn, I would assume, or they'll form their own, but I don't think they will via their focus tree. I don't actually know exactly how that works. We're just sitting here. It's been a couple of months since the Netherlands has capitulated and we're just waiting still. And here we go. I was waiting for this. They've been doing air production for a long time. War with France focus well underway. And uh, now Germany will declare war on them. I'm pretty sure the AI basically is just will declare war if it can. So hopefully we're going to see some action here soon. There's not a whole lot of troops on the border over here for France. There's plenty for Germany. Not for France yet, so uh, maybe when we get closer to that war declaration, we're going to see some boys lining up here. And here we go, lads. It's time for war. Again, wide open. I don't know why they didn't even try to defend their borders. I don't know why there's not troops on their border, but it has happened. They joined the Allies, despite their, uh, their uh, ideological agreeances with the Soviets. They have joined the Allies, and that means we will see some Brits coming across and setting up a front line here. But uh, man, they've already pushed pretty far into France. Uh, looks like they're having a bit of a race to the sea over here. The Battle of Lille well underway, but they're literally about to lose it. So yeah, already going to do better than they did the first time around. And yeah, you can see how many regiments they quickly reinforce this front line with a couple of British units. But honestly, it's mostly French and they are having some dogged defense here in Paris. They've actually inflicted a ton of casualties, 300,000 uh, over 130 on the Germans. They're taking quite a bit of losses as well because they are fighting down in the south. 
but it looks like they're also inflicting crazy casualties against the Italians because, you know, it's Mussolini. What do you expect from them in the war? And Paris has fallen and they have fallen back behind the river, setting up a bit of a line here and parts of the Maginot forts are still holding on, but the breakthrough for Germany is pretty solid so far. The fact that they didn't have their border over here stationed is a definite blunder, but that's uh, that's Paradox AI for you. 84 divisions in this army group are on this uh, on this border here, so they have the regiments. It's just a matter of do they have the strength. And the borders just keep getting pushed back. The Germans are so deep into France, but no capitulation yet because they uh, still have a higher threshold for capitulation than uh, for like the regular 1936, you know, democratic France does have, but they're hurting for guns now. They're hurting, but Germany's actually hurting worse. They are a huge deficit for like basically everything except for light tanks, which they're not even using in battle. You can see France is losing a ton of man and they are so close to capitulation, but they have inflicted so many casualties, 1 million casualties against Germany and another almost 600 against Italy. If they can hold out for just a little bit longer until the UK can funnel a couple more men in, because obviously the UK has men, they just need to get them on the lines there. They may be able to push them back. Come on, France, you can do it. I have faith in you. <laughs> Lads, and I almost don't believe it. Loyalty to Moscow has been finished. The Glads pulled an old switcheroo and joined the common turn, calling the Russians into the war who are now at war with the German Reich, putting the Germans at war with just about everybody that is not the Axis. So the war on two fronts is officially underway. Absolutely wild how on the edge of my seat I am watching this 95% towards capitulation. They even have a collaboration government. Germans have taken over 2 million casualties, one and a half just from the French alone, and uh, almost 700 for the Italians. So absolutely incredible numbers. And uh, it's about to get much worse. Now I'm very curious to see how this will go. Meanwhile, over in the East, Japan has conquered Indochina and pushed well into China proper. Uh, looks like they're probably going to win given the time, I'm sure that they would. It's just a matter of whether they're going to be able to keep supplying their troops and uh, killing as many Chinese troops as possible because there's a lot of them. And it looks like the Germans screwed up. They didn't even have troops on their border with the Soviets. They were going all in on France. Uh, things will stabilize, but I think that means that France is probably going to have a better time over here. <laughs> Look at these mad lads here. This infantry division just straight up cut a line <laughs> through them. Look like they were running straight for Berlin, but uh, they got intercepted here, pushed off to the side. But the Soviets are Congo lining into this little patch here. So uh, we may end up seeing a bit of uh, strangeness going on over here on the Eastern Front. Meanwhile, it's all quiet on the Western Front. No real border changes yet, but it looks like uh, Germany is definitely in trouble. And to add insult to injury, the United States has now joined in 1941. So a little bit early this time around. Uh, take a look at that fielded manpower, 10.7 million versus 2.3. But uh, Germany is holding on. Like, don't get it twisted. They are doing very good right now as far as uh, now being defensive in a way. Oh, yeah. That is a lot of green arrows on the common turn side. Uh, doesn't look like Germany is going to be making it much longer. The Endsieg is upon us. It looks like the, uh, the Volkssturm is defending Berlin from the Soviets. Meanwhile, over in the West, we have the Low Countries being absolutely liberated and uh, doesn't look like Germany is doing that good they are out of manpower and uh, they are uh, slowly being surrounded over here steiner anytime you want to get that counter attack going it's about that time my friend october of 1942 and that's all she wrote that is a game a blouses so here we have it the soviet union taking some states the soviet uh, italy taking some states, the French taking a few and a whole lot of puppets and liberations. Japan expanded quite a bit. It looks like they lost a little bit of land over in China. But uh, if you look down to the south here, you're going to see a few of the islands have turned white. A lot of them. The Philippines, for the most part, are entirely occupied by the Japanese and then uh, the entirety of the Dutch East Indies, except for Papua. So or New Guinea or whatever that island is called. I'm sure people will correct me. But uh, yeah, the Japanese having a very good go at it. Uh, that is until, you know, 
the island hopping campaign starts. But uh, at the moment, they are dominating. We've got some interesting stuff going on here. The French not only took a bit of the Rhineland, but also took a bit of uh, Bavaria. So uh, Bavaria is France, apparently, and Soviet Italy is a thing. The French commune has also occupied a couple of provinces over here with the Balkan Socialist Union, the Republic of Austria, an American occupation and a British occupation zone, and then just occupying some land over here for the United Kingdom on their own. The Soviets set up a uh, Soviet Czechoslovakia and then Soviet Romania, but that's not quite the end of it because they're still at war because for some reason, and I have no idea why, they ended up switching sides, not the French, but the United States and the UK randomly went to war. I think it's because Japan attacked because at some point the alliances got juggled around and Japan joined the common turn on their side of the war and the allies switched over to the Axis side of the war. I don't know why, I don't know how, but uh, I know that it's not gonna end because the US is never gonna get invaded by the AI in this game. So in the end, the border gore is pretty atrocious, but the French commune stronger than democratic France? I'd say so. But while we're talking about the United States, I'm thinking either fascist or communist United States for the next episode, next week's episode. So uh, let me know how you think about that in the comments below. And if you enjoyed the video, make sure you like it and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on future videos. Special thanks to ALS Gamer, LeGrand Puba, Chio, Josh Kapchinski, Adam Rhino, Blonde Damon, Cannon Fodder, and many more. If you want to see your name here and early access to these videos, check out the join button below the video or the Patreon linked in the description.